Hi, I'm Matt Taylor. Welcome to the Antique Photons Observatory Report. Thanks for tuning in to the Antique Photons Observatory Report. In this episode, I'll be reviewing the William Optics FLT 132mm APO. This refractor telescope is the current flagship instrument of the William Optics line, and as such, it sports a long list of premium features that we'll be taking a closer look at in this review. The optical tube weighs in at about 20 pounds and is approximately 31 inches in length when the dew shield is collapsed and about 36 inches when it's fully extended. Action on the sliding dew shield is firm but smooth with very little wiggle or play. The optical tube is CNC machined out of high grade aluminum and is powder painted in white with golden anodized accents on the dew shield and focuser. The metal push-on lens cap is enhanced with the William Optic Swan logo and is also beautifully anodized in this deep golden color. This telescope features a top quality 132mm air spaced triplet apochromatic objective lens that is 925mm in focal length and is made using FPL 53 glass for superb color correction and tack sharp focusing. It is fully coated using William Optics STM coatings to minimize reflections and enhance light throughput. Due to the very high quality and design of this lens, the FLT-132 is ideal for both viewing at the eyepiece or imaging the night sky using DSLR or CCD cameras. William Optics has a field flattener available for this telescope that comes with adapters for mounting a DSLR camera in the proper position so as to provide a flat field for these large chipped cameras. This field flattener can also be used with CCD cameras, but as of yet, there are no off-the-shelf adapters that provide the proper spacing between the CCD chip and the flattener that I know of. Those who are using this flattener with a CCD camera that I know of have made custom adapters or have had these adapters made for them. At the other end of the optical tube is a massive 360 degree rotatable 4 inch focuser that features a 2 speed reduction drive for fine focusing. The focuser is also CNC machined out of high grade aluminum and is anodized in black with a white swan logo. The draw tube has a non marring brass compression ring as does the included 2 inch to 1 and a quarter inch adapter. The draw tube has a graduated scale in both centimeters and inches that allows one to quickly set the focuser to an approximate focus position. And the rotation device has a 360 degree graduated scale in one degree increments that allows the user to position the eyepiece to a comfortable viewing position or the astrophotographer to easily frame imaging targets or to rotate the camera 180 degrees after a meridian flip. Also included with the FLT-132 is a set of mounting rings that are machined out of aluminum and anodized black in color, and a high quality carrying case that has cut to shape high impact foam inside to protect the telescope. It has two handles and wheels on one end for easier transport. 
Mine is the FLT132-P package that also includes a high quality 2 inch quartz dielectric diagonal. In addition to these items, I also purchased a 2 inch extension tube for the telescope's focuser that makes reaching focus when using a CCD camera possible. This item was an additional $39. As pictured here, this package retails for $3,998 from William Optics. I've used this telescope primarily for imaging, but have on occasion used it for viewing. When viewing, I've used Nagler and Panoptic eyepieces. The moon and planets snap to focus as one would expect from a high quality Apple refractor, and false color is not present at all, even on the brightest of objects. On some nights of relatively good scene, views of the moon were some of the sharpest I've ever seen, and the 132mm objective renders my favorite colorful doubles beautifully. I was really surprised by how well this telescope performs on deep space objects, especially where some of the brighter nebulas and galaxies are concerned. On some DSOs, like M27, I was able to view the object direct without having to use adverted vision. For imaging, I used the Mead DSi Pro 2, the DSi Pro 3, and the SBIG ST2000XM. Using this telescope with the Mead DSi Pro 2 has been an awesome experience. I've been able to obtain some of the sharpest and most highly detailed long exposure H-alpha images that I've ever produced. Due to other reviews that I read prior to purchasing my FLT-132, I was a little surprised to find that I could not achieve round stars corner to corner when using the SBIG ST2000XM at prime focus. The oblong stars in the corners of the frame were not bad, but it was noticeable to me and I didn't like it. To solve this problem, I used the Teleview 08 times reducer flattener spaced at 55 millimeters from the CCD chip. In this configuration, the stars are round across the field as you can see in this image of the double cluster. The ST2000XM camera, CFW8A filter wheel, and Telview 08 times reducer flattener makes for a rather heavy weight hanging on the focuser. After having properly adjusted the focuser for this amount of weight, I've had no slippage problems even when pointed near a zenith. However, if there is a downside to this telescope, it is the focuser's backlash. When adjusting focus manually, I have a little more than one eighth of a turn backlash in the focuser. This has turned out to uh, not be much of a problem for me since installing a robo focuser unit. I removed the robo focus unit for this review. One thing that potential owners of this telescope should be aware of is that this is a rather large refractor and once additional items are added to it the total weight that a mount will have to carry can become considerable. For viewing, I would recommend no less than an Atlas Gem EQ6 type mount. For imaging, I use a Mountain Instruments MI250, but I think that if one were to be conservative in adding additional items to the setup, a Lost Mandy G11 would probably serve well as an imaging mount, but here too, one might get away with using an Atlas Gem. In conclusion, my opinion is that this is a fantastic refractor. I'm very happy with it and would without question buy it again. The build quality is excellent and typical of what I've come to expect from William Optics. If I were asked, I would have no problem at all recommending this telescope, something I've done in the recent past for a new FLT-132 owner. And last but not least, I also want to mention that support from William Optics has been exceptional. This company has never failed me and I feel very comfortable doing business with them. I hope you've enjoyed this video review. And again, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the Antique Photons Observatory Report.